All right, I now want to talk about something that is in some ways one of my other favorite things to talk about, and that is how the physics of the ocean creates a three-dimensional structure much in the same way that the geology of land or even a tropical rainforest creates a three-dimensional structure that organisms can exploit. Differences in temperature and salinity at the surface and across from lower latitudes to higher latitudes, as well as differences in temperature and salinity from the surface to the depths, create different water masses, different properties that are conducive to habitats for different organisms. Certain organisms prefer a certain temperature and salinity. And if those temperatures and salinities are changing, then we're going to find different organisms. So what I call the physical structure of the world ocean, just like uh, skyscrapers in New York City or a tropical rainforest or a kelp uh, forest or even mountains and valleys and those kinds of things, they create a three-dimensional kind of framework for organisms, in a sense, to exploit and find places to live and reproduce. So this is a section that I call the physical structure, the three-dimensional physical structure of the world ocean. So again, temperature and salinity control the structure of the world ocean. And why is that? Why are temperature and salinity the key factors here? Well, if you recall from an earlier chapter, chapter seven perhaps, you remember that temperature and salinity control the density of the world ocean. And I urge you to go back to that figure in chapter seven where we talk about processes that change the density of the world ocean, whether it's sea ice melting or sea ice forming, whether it's heating or cooling, whether it's rivers running off, all those different things that change temperature and salinity because temperature and salinity change the density of the water. And in doing so, they change the buoyancy of the water and in a sense create a different structure to the water. Remember the layering out of the ocean according to the density. Cold water is going to sink and be near the bottom. Warmer water, less saline, fresher water is going to be near the top. And we also talked about buoyancy. Water masses moving up and down according to their density and their buoyancy. So all these factors that Temperature and salinity, controlling density, controlling buoyancy, control the structure of the world ocean. And in fact, as we'll find in our chapter on uh, surface and deep circulation, they also control movement of the water as well. So not only do we have a habitat that's defined by its temperature and salinity, it's also going to affect how that water mass moves. It's kind of a, a moving habitat um, in the world ocean, of course, which what's, makes it such an exciting place. Okay, if we imagine what it must be like to live in the world ocean, it's going to be something quite different than what you find living on land. Here we live pretty much a horizontal existence. Yeah, we get up in a plane or we climb a mountain or we go up in a building or something like that and we occasionally do the vertical thing, but not as much as in the ocean. Consider an ocean that's anywhere from, on average, a couple miles deep. Imagine if you could float freely up in the sky, up to a couple miles high or something like that. Imagine twisting and tumbling through the air uh, with the greatest of ease, um, as if we were all weightless, so to speak. Imagine cats and dogs and what life would be like in a tumbling, kind of drifting world up to miles in the atmosphere. Well, that's what it's like to live in the ocean. If you're an organism living in the ocean, the ocean is always in motion. It's moving up, it's moving down, and you're subjected to the motions of the ocean unless you're gripping the bottom, attached to the bottom. But that's what it's like. And I want you to have that image of floating around weightless. Maybe you've had some dreams like that. I know I have. I don't know what those mean. Anyway, but you have motions of the ocean uh, that create a sort of free-moving, three-dimensional movement, three-dimensional structure to the ocean that's kind of unfamiliar to us here. So if you can kind of take a few moments and visualize what that would be like, you have some sense of what life in the ocean is like and the kinds of challenges that are faced by organisms living in this moving environment. All right. Imagine, too, the kinds of complexity that we find on the surface of the ocean. This is a satellite image uh, probably taken from a space shuttle or 
uh, an astronaut, um, early astronaut, rotating. Could be from the International Space Station, somebody rotating the Earth. And this is just sort of the glint of sunlight off the sea surface. And what do we see? This extreme complexity. Um, this is physical structure to the ocean because different regions in here are going to have different properties of some kind or another. And all these little areas, uh, all these differences in the ocean are going to be areas that have different properties, regions perhaps with different temperatures, different salinities. Uh, and in that, they provide different kinds of habitats, in a sense, for an organism. So if you go up to the mountains and think about the difference between the north slope and the south slope, or the difference between a rocky or a sandy um, area, even within the mountains, it gives you some sense of the kinds of complexity that we find in the ocean, only in the ocean, it's the temperature and salinity, and really even the motions of the ocean itself that are causing the spatial uh, complexity, the time-space varying complexity in the ocean.